Innovation has been in overdrive since the world returned to a level of normality, and some of the bikes which were released in 2023 gave an indication as to what's to come. So, we've pulled together what we believe are the road bike tech trends that will define 2024. We're expecting there to be more than any other type of bike in 2024, that being lightweight road bikes. In fact, not just lightweight, but super lightweight. It's not been a secret that road bikes of late have become a bit heavier with the addition of disc brakes and electronic group sets, but it now appears as though brands have started to address the problem and are now releasing bikes which total that of their previously mechanically geared rim brake ancestors. Sure, these bikes will come at great expense, but it's nice to see that riders do have the ability to enjoy the benefits of the latest tech without it weighing them down. After the release of the Specialized S-Works Tarmac, the Giant Defy, the Factor Row 2 VAM and Orbea or Orca this year, it's been made very clear what the ambition of the industry really is. So, over the next 12 months, expect to hear a lot about how much lighter bikes have become. All we hope is that those weight savings will be felt on bikes costing four figures, not five. What do the Giant Defy, Factor O2 VAM and Orbea Orca all have in common? That's right, super thin top tubes. Much like my last point, there is a common theme. That being the desire to save weight, and it appears as though multiple brands are heading down the same route. That being to strip it out of the top tube. Clearly, it's been decided that the top tube is a low stress enough area that it can be afforded to reduce the size of the tubing as well as the thickness of the tube walls. For example, on the latest version of the Trek Madone, you can quite easily push the carbon fibre inwards and it will visibly flex. Of course, we would never recommend anybody do this, but it certainly shows just how thin tube walls really are in this area of the bike. Much like the widespread adoption of drop seat stays, we think it's clear that an increasing number of brands will start manipulating top tubes in more and more creative ways. Custom painted bikes are on the rage and the amount of frame painters available to commission has never been higher. As the World Tour has been doing for years with one-off paint jobs for their most decorated riders, it's now easier than ever for us to do the same for ourselves. Up until now, the process has been easier for the brands as they can obtain RTP frames, also known as ready-to-paint frames, from their own factories. What this means is that the frame is shipped from the factory completely bare, or in some cases with a very thin layer of lacquer on the surface. Then the frame painters can start painting straight away rather than having to sand back all the layers of paint before they can start adding colour. What used to be the reserve of manufacturers can now be obtained by us all, but currently only a small selection of brands offer RTP frames to consumers, most notably Specialized. It released the S-Works SL8 in an RTP option, which also, coincidentally, was the lightest frame option you could buy since it didn't have any paint on it. This meant that people either had the choice of creating a super lightweight build or sending it straight to the painters and saving on the cost of labour to have it all sanded back. We imagine it's also saved Specialized a step in the manufacturing process, which would mean the profit margin for that bike will be higher. It's for all these reasons that we expect RTP frames to become much more common over the coming year. It's a win for bike manufacturers, the consumers, and also the frame painters. Integrated cockpits have been around for a while now, and finally, it seems as though some brands are catching on and have developed ways for these sculpted pieces of carbon to be a lot more usable for the mass market. Perhaps it was down to complaints from industry staff, pro teams, or bike shop mechanics, but the routing from shifters through the bars, stem, and head tube has now, in some cases, reached a point where it does actually make a lot more sense. For example, on this Trek handlebar, the design allows for the brake hose to run externally, cupped inside a little channel, and then be held in place with a composite cover before diverting the hoses back towards the head tube and neatly tucking into the frame. 
It's designed like this, which shows that all-in-one carbon cockpits don't need to be overly complicated, and still allows for riders to obtain that hoseless look without all of the associated faff. We would not be surprised if similar setups start emerging as a way to occupy the middle ground between cost, practicality, aesthetics, and performance. As we tick into another year, once again, we are predicting that one by drive trains will be on the up. So far, we've always been left waiting for the big swell of widespread adoption, but it seems as though it's only the SRAM-sponsored World Tour teams that seem to be engaging with the tech. However, that being said, as we get into 2024, there's every chance that SRAM could launch something big in this space. And as the classified hub gearing tech gets ever better, there's every chance that we're on the verge of all throwing our front derailleurs in the bin. So, we'll continue to hold our breath and predict that 2024 will be the year that more and more people decide to make the shift. Perhaps if Jumbo Visma take more stage wins at the Tour on a one by setup, then that could be the first domino to fall. One of the more popular bike launches of the year was the Canyon Endurace. It landed to a round of high praise and intrigue. There was one new feature which seemed to capture the bulk of the attention, and that was the addition of internal frame storage. This isn't anything new, as plenty of other bikes in both the road and gravel category have adopted the functionality, but seeing yet another high-profile model take it on is a clear sign that other brands will follow suit. The convenience of internal frame storage is undeniable, and anything which enables you to carry a little less gear in your pockets is only a good thing. Plus, taking a more cynical view, it creates an opportunity for the bike brands to try and sell you more tools. Whatever your take on the matter, we think internal frame storage is good for riders. It means you can carry more, have less in your pockets, and in our eyes, that makes for a more enjoyable ride. The Hope Lotus track bike turned heads when it was first launched in 2019. Now, nearly five years after its initial release, Lotus has released the 136, a geared electric version of the bike. While we're not suggesting that this will be the race bike of 2024, we think the design language it encapsulates could be. We would not be surprised if some brands now start to experiment with super wide seat stays as a way to improve aerodynamic performance and reduce rear end turbulence. Arguably, the design of the Lotus 136 is wasted on an e-bike, as the electric assistance will cut out before the sleek aerodynamic shapes start to have an impact on the top end speeds. But as a concept and potential inspiration, there's every possibility that other brands could start to borrow elements of this alien looking machine. Let us know down in the comments what you think could be the biggest trends of 2024. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and we will see you again very soon.